So I got this for $79.99. There was other ones that were cheaper, but there was a delivery fee. I'm going to review this, open her up, take a look and see what she's made of. And then we're going to do a pretty interesting modification, which, which will give it a very unique and cool sound. So let's get after it, and then we will do some playing on it. So I'd like to show you guys the unboxing. That way you can see how these cheap guitars come shipped in case you're thinking about buying one. This one was fine. It came with a cord and some picks and a strap for you to uh, strap her on. There's a gig bag. The gig bag's made out of that kind of that waterproof material. So it's not bad. I mean considering the price of the whole thing so it was kind of weird unzipping the bag because it doesn't zip all the way around it only stops like halfway so you got to kind of pull the guitar out of it so that was kind of weird but other than that the gig bag was fine it's got a backpack straps and all that stuff too so you can see here it stops right there which is just kind of odd so you you got to kind of pull the guitar out of the bag itself but and obviously they all come wrapped in the little foam bag. <laughs> so. so some of the stats on this guitar is that it's a 39-inch solid body electric guitar. It does have a sort of transparent red glossy finish, which looks pretty nice. And well, the back of the neck is pretty chunky. As you can see here, it has like a satin finish on it. So... You can tell the wood is made of lower quality. It's very light and, you know, it doesn't really feel super substantial. But, I mean, honestly, that's going to be expected on these student guitars like this. I mean, they're made for people to start on and that sort of thing. So for $80 guitar, it came packed and undamaged and ready to rock. <laughs> We are doing the out-of-the-box sound check right now. I did not do anything to this guitar other than tune it. So let's hear a couple chords and see how she sounds. I must say, it's pretty decent for $79. The uh, fret ends feel wonderful on this guitar. Uh, it looks like the fret work is pretty decent. Um, it needs a shining like they all do. Every single one of these cheap guitars I've gotten need a shining on them. Um, the nut seems like it was cut pretty decent. There's not a... Uh, the action's not too terribly high. There's a little bit of a, a bow on the neck, but but uh, all that's going to get sorted out when we set it all up. So it's not set up. It's not anything. And the intonation is a little bit out. But it's not bad. So that's the clean stuff, and obviously you can see here it has a single humbucker toward the bridge. It's a little forward than on a lot of guitars, but I think that's just because it's a single. Some of them, like I don't know if you ever seen the old PVs one, they were they were cockeyed a little bit. And uh, so here's the, the 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 tone knob. I'm gonna turn the tone knob all the way back now. So the tone knob actually works. It is super light. I think it's a basswood body. It's super light, you know. And I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. But this is called a gold foil pickup. Rag Coder uses these in all of his guitars. And they used to come in those old Tysco uh, 60s tulip guitars, they called them. And they used to, they're, they're Japanese built, super cool guitars, but they were very light, very, you know very cheap they would go from anywhere from twenty dollars to a hundred dollars back in the 60s so 
you know, these guitars kind of reminds me of that spirit in a lot of ways. You know, they're affordable and um, it's actually a playable guitar out of the box. Like this is seriously, out of, I mean, I can't believe how, uh, how actually decent it is. But you know, I mean, you, you always want to take these, if you can't set it up yourself or if you don't want to learn how to set it up, always, always take these to a technician to get it set up. So you're going to eliminate a bunch of hassle and headache. So anyway, I was thinking, what can I do to this guitar to just kind of step it up a notch, you know? So what we're going to do is we're going to put this... <laughs> This is a Lawler gold foil, mind you. This could this pickup cost two hundred dollars. <laughs> Why would I put a two hundred dollar pickup in a seventy nine dollar guitar? Actually, it's to prove a, a point of like if you can invest in expensive guitars, what you can invest in is very very good pickups. And when you invest in good pickups, you always have them because if you go to sell a guitar that you've upgraded, nine times out of ten, you're not going to get out of the guitar what you put into it so what you want to do is do your modifications to your guitar and then when you get ready to move on and sell it put the old stuff back on there as long as you didn't do a whole lot of modifications to the body you should be fine and then you'll be able to sell it for at least what it's worth stock and then you have your your pickups for other things and you have your other stuff for other things so we're gonna go to the bench get this thing all set up and looking pretty and I'll put this new pickup in it and see what she sounds like afterwards. All right, so we're going to get rid of the strings, take it all apart, and get down to business here. Now, on this one, I checked the tuners just to make sure that they were tight because the last couple guitars that came in, the screws were really loose on those tuners. So we're getting the pickup gone and... Uh, taking the bridge off, checking all that stuff out, and there's no continuity in the cavity, so we're going to build a Faraday cage on this and get it all set up for the gold foil that's going in it. Now, the worst thing about this guitar setup was the nut. Granted, it was closer to the fretboard than the other ones, but it's cut almost too low. Over time, with it being plastic, it's going to eventually wear out but we're just going to hang on to it for right now and continue with the process it has a 12 inch radius at the first fret as you can see there and a 12 inch radius at the 12th fret which is pretty comfortable it's pretty standard here is the measurement for the nut here is the measurement for the 12th fret And then we've got the neck thickness at the first fret right here. And then the neck thickness at the 12th fret right here. Now something interesting with this neck profile. Here's the first fret neck profile. And you can see it's got a little bit more, it's a little bit cheeky on the bass side than it is on the treble side. So I just thought that was interesting that it's not exactly... Uh, symmetrical you know what I mean so it, it feels good though it just feels real baseball baddish you can see here how thick the actual neck is and it definitely feels thick but you can always take some of that off with a little bit of sandpaper if you wanted to but it feel I mean the uh the finish on it feels great there's no issues there it's just thicker than what I'm normally used to playing so obviously we had to check uh, to make sure all the frets were level and it has the thin vintage type frets on it. So they're pretty small. Um, all in all though, it was uh, pretty spot on. The only thing was it needed polished in which they all always need polished because they're just not going to go to that extra step. And as you can see here, this is all polished and looking pretty. The fret ends were great. They were level. Um, everything was fine with that, which really surprised me, <laughs> really. But it, we got them looking good and shiny and feeling really good, and uh, time to move on. So we're going to get to the pickup section now. I, like I said before, I had to build a Faraday cage. These are considered single-coil pickups, and it is encased in its own casing, but 
I just wanted to make a Faraday cage just for the heck of it. I need to practice with uh, using this copper foil anyway. <laughs> so I went ahead and uh, all I did was I replaced the pickup inside the old humbucker pickup ring. I just had to file off a little bit of the, uh, of the sides there so it would fit. And, um, yeah, it turned out pretty good, though. So we have our, our cage to protect from all that stuff. We're going to do the same thing on the uh, control cavity. Make sure that all that's not going to get too noisy. I also redid the wiring harness. It had 500K pots in it and uh, the 22UF capacitor. So I, I went ahead and uh, put a 047 capacitor in it with the 250k pot since it is going to a single coil deal also replaced the knobs i went ahead and put some chrome chrome knobbies on there and we got it looking good i mean that that's that's with it all set up with the the new pickup and the new knobs and we're ready to go just about here is the bridge i wanted to give you an up close uh picture of what this bridge looks like it's just made out of stamp material it is fully adjustable though which is great you know so now we're going to put strings back on it and uh do the final setup set up the set the neck do the action and set the intonation on it and there you go you have yourself a budget coder caster i think it looks pretty good with that pickup in there and it sounds even better so i'm excited for you guys to hear it So who is this guitar for? Honestly, this is my second $80 guitar that I've reviewed. And um, it's way better than the last one. And as far as, uh, I think this is probably my fifth or sixth budget guitar that I've reviewed. And it's by far one of the better setup guitars that I've, that I've uh, experienced so far. So if you don't have a whole lot of money and you want to get started playing, grab one of these, take it to a tech get it set up for you and uh you'll be able to start and play on it for a while now now with this new pickup in there as you can see it looks pretty awesome too doesn't it it's uh it sounds pretty good <laughs> what i did is i uh i just recorded a little a little bluesy noodly thing um just to kind of give you an idea of what it sounds like with this new pickup in it so we're just gonna uh, take this video out with the song I, I played and recorded and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 